How's it going everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Arthur and today we're going to go through task four uh, of the Goldman Sachs virtual internship basic Excel skills. I think this is the most technical task we have done so far which is creating the cash flow statement. This worksheet is a little bit more unstructured so I will walk through uh, my process of creating the cash flow statement. If you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you've never encountered a cash flow statement before, I recommend doing a brief Google search and getting familiar with the key inputs into, into calculating uh, net cash flow. Here we essentially start with EBITDA and then we take out expenses in order for us to calculate the net cash flow, which will then be used to uh, figure out what debt payment we can complete. So let's get right into it. So as always, we start off with uh, this blank sheet and we're gonna aim to fill out the blue areas. So we have uh, also some uh, basically hints on how we can uh, lay out our net cash flow calculation, but it's not super specific. Um, so I'll show you an example of what of how I completed this task. So as I said before, uh, what I listed that we'll need for the net cash flow, if we start with it, the BDA, um, this is what we would need. So we have a BDA number, uh, we want our tax numbers, uh, then we also want our dividends that uh, we calculated. We want the change in networking capital, the net interest, and we also want our net capex figures. Now all of these are gonna be uh, units, dollar units, dollar amounts. Uh, and it's important here for us not to mix up our signs. So we're gonna start off with uh, our EBITDA numbers from our prior worksheet. So if we just go down, let me show you guys so you can see. So we're gonna go back into our PL forecast to get our, to get our EBITDA numbers. Right here. Now once again we can press control enter to fill out the entire row that we highlighted. Now for the tax figures we can uh, also go in our PL, so we're just basically uh, copying and pasting. Once again, making sure that everything here is linked. Uh, as we're gonna do a sum, we're, ta we're actually taking out the tax from our EBITDA, EBITDA number. So we wanna keep these numbers uh, negative if we're doing a sum. second so see here the dividends are positive so we want that to be a negative number so here I multiply by negative one oops we want that whole row just copy that across and uh, now for change in networking capital we do not have that in our PL but we have that we have the assumptions as a percent of revenue in our assumption sheet. So let's quickly calculate that. Let's warm this entire row. So see here it says uh, use percentage of revenue in our assumptions. So let's highlight the row, go to our assumptions sheet and look at our percentage that we had, it's already negative. So we can, uh, we don't have to multiply by negative one here. Times our revenue, control and enter. So net interest, we're gonna leave for now. Uh, we'll come back to it in a second. And net capex is very similar to net working capital. So, let me just explain also while I'm doing this quickly. So basically what we're doing right now is we're taking out um, like cash, ex actual cash expenses in order to get our net cash flow out of earnings before interest um, 
taxes, depreciation, amortization. So notice how we actually took out, we're taking out interest, we're taking out tax and the depreciation, depreciation amortization is actually, it's just like, it's an accounting. It's, it's not a cash expense. It's basically a form of accounting. So it wouldn't be uh, part of, we, we would actually have to add it back, but it's already part of EBITDA. So yeah, research a little bit about net cash flow. Um, but this is, this is a pretty, pretty simple way of doing it. If you start with EBITDA and we take out these cash expenses. Uh, anyway, so what I did there was I summed up the, um, the net cash flow. So with the negative signs, it takes it away from our EBITDA number. And here it's important that I'm just linking up our closing cash is also our opening cash for the next year. Same thing with closing debt and that's our opening debt. And now I'm just um, uh, linking up uh, cash to balance. Uh, cash to balance sheet numbers and debt repayment numbers. So isn't, that's just coming from uh, the uh, cells above. Nothing fancy there. And making sure that this would be us, our sum. So this number here, if we're still keeping that sum formula, the debt repayment needs to be a negative number. I think the hardest part is sort of figuring out or making sure all the signs are correct. All right, so now we're sort of ready to talk about net interest. So our net interest figure is essentially uh, our, our outflows plus our inflows or the other way around, uh, our interest income minus our uh, interest expense. So we would have some interest income based on uh, any interest that we're carrying from our cash on hand. So we're gonna do our inflows first So our inflow would come from our cash balance. So we're gonna use our um, opening cash figure right here. And if you remember from our assumptions page, we actually had uh, sort of a, a, a cash, that's right, cash interest rate. So it was 1%, so we're gonna use that. That's our inflow. Uh, and then close bracket, and then we're subtracting out the outflow. So again, making sure that the outflow, if we're subtracting it, the outflow needs to be a positive number. And we're multiplying that by our the, the debt, the interest we're carrying on debt. There we go. So we have our, it's a, a negative 15,000 number and see how we have also filled out the entire row, but we just don't have the figures yet. So let's get those down here on the opening cash. Good. And let's do the same for the debt portion. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, as you can see, we haven't figured out our debt repayment schedule just yet. So everything basically, you know, it's staying the same. There's no, our debt is not actually going down. All of our cash is just staying in our cash. We're not using it to pay down the debt. So there's a couple, so it says, you know, come up with your own formula. Um, I'm gonna use just a simple if statement. I think you can, you can probably figure something out that's a bit more, a bit simpler. But essentially, if the debt portion is larger than our net cash flow, we're just gonna pay down the maximum amount of cash flow that we had and then if that's not true, which means the debt is smaller, then we're just gonna pay up all the debt. So a simple if statement there, and we're gonna copy that across. And it looks like basically every year, we're just paying down uh, all, our, all the cash that we make is going straight into our debt payment. Now there's one final step. Uh, if you remember from the pre and L prior, we need to go back and now link our net interest which will be this row. 
linked with our cash flow net interest line. Uh, we need this number up here and control enter. And this actually changes our PBT and NPAT and gross dividend figures. They should now be lower because we have a net interest uh, expense here. And that means by FY24, we actually have paid down the entire debt and our overall closing cash increases uh, by about 37,000 to 50, uh, from 15 then to $52,000. So there we go guys, that is the task for you. Again, the most confusing part I would say is calculating that net cash flow figure. Uh, you have to sort of jump around a little bit. You have to sort of foresee that in order to calculate net interest, we need our debt figures um, and cash on hand, which usually comes the balance sheet. So we don't really have a balance sheet here, but we can see bits of it in this cash flow statement from cash to balance sheet. We have opening cash, opening debt, all those figures would essentially be coming from the balance sheet. And that's what we need to use to calculate the net interest. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, uh, leave a like and comment. Please let me know if you guys have any questions or if you did this uh, a different way. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.